What's cracking everyone? My name is Ryan and today I'm going to be doing a comparison video talking about three different solid headphone options that sit between $150 to $200. Now, I will say that all three of these I could see being a solid choice for somebody depending on what you are looking for. So the way I want to approach this video is I want to talk about my personal pros and cons for each of these headphones in hopes that maybe that can help some of you out if you're stuck between a decision between any of these options. And I should say before I get into this video that yes, there are many other options that sit in this price range. These just happen to be three that I personally think are solid choices and that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. All right. So first headphone that I'm going to put up on the stand is going to be the HD 560S. Let's roll. First of all is the sound. It is a reference sound and what I mean by reference sound is to me, this has a good representation throughout the entire frequency response. The bass extends pretty low, although not very boomy or anything like that, but it does have the extension. The mid range is very present. And then the treble region, there's some nice sparkles, some nice airiness. It's not sibilant or anything like that, which also lends to the fact that this has natural and decent sound stage. Those are all the pros so far. The other is going to be the comfort. I think this is a comfortable headphone to me, again, being lightweight and also cushions pretty nice to my head. And the last thing I would say there is scalability. Now, this being 120 ohms and 110 dB, like I said, this can be powered by phones, laptops, things like that. You're going to get sound. You're going to get decent sound at that. But you can throw this on some higher end, higher end amps. Uh, tubes, things like that, and the sound is going to come out a little bit more and you're going to get a little bit of flavor towards your sound depending on how you power these just because of that impedance that you're going to get out of this headphone. All right, with that, here are the cons. First of all, for me, is going to be the imaging. Now, this images really well from left to right. It's just that center imaging, whoops, just that center imaging that can be a little bit uh, not quite as pinpoint sometimes now. The other thing can be the comfort. Now, I will tell you for me, like I said, this is a comfortable headphone, but for others, it is the clampiness because it is pretty clampy, I would say. And at the bottom here, I've seen some complaints of people saying it was a little too clampy on their head shape. Now my head shape, it's perfectly fine. I don't have any issues wearing it. In fact, I think it's pretty darn comfortable, especially being 240 grams, but just note the clampiness does bother some. And then on the sound signature, because it doesn't have a lot of bass there, you may want to give it a little bit of a bass bump if you need to do that, or if you have a bass feature on the amp that you use, that might help out as well. And the mid-range is a little bit, can be shouty, can be harsh at times. If you don't like that kind of mid-forwardness to it, just note this does have that going on for it at times. So if you're not a big vocalist person, you may not like the mid-range on this for that part of it. Next up on the stand, come on down, Harmonic Dine Athena. All right, so first let's go ahead and start with sound on the pros. Now, this one is a little bit different of a frequency response in that it represents all the ranges fairly well. It does have some boominess in the bass and lower mids that I personally like out of this. It gives it some flavor. And what that lends to is a little bit less engagement in the mid to upper mid range. However, it is going to be a little bit dialed back in that upper mid range. And then treble trebleness, trebleness, treble, you get a little bit of spark um, out of that as well. And a little bit of uh, just peaks here and there with the treble, which lends to the fact that this has actually a decent sound stage, in my opinion, for being a semi closed back headphone. And then the imaging here, I think, is done really well. And then it's just easy to drive. I mean, this is only 34 ohms, as I said, so you can power this off pretty much anything. You're not going to get, you're not going to need to do any kind of crazy, you know, amps to hook this up to or anything like that. So scalability here is going to be pretty, you know, even keeled for depending on what you're using here out of the Harmonic Dine Athena. And the last pro I'm going to give this one is the fact that I do think this is also a comfortable headphone when you put it on your head you know, sits very well in my head and it's comfortable up here throughout. It's evenly distributed on the weight. I don't feel like it's overly heavy and never had issues when I've worn my Harmonic Dyne Athena. 
All right, so the cons on the Harmonic Dyn Athena. Well, let's see. First of all, there we go. Now, I'm ready to handle this headphone because the biggest con I would say about the Athena aesthetically is going to be the glass on the cups and right up in this range here. It's a cool look if you like that, or it may bother the hell out of you if you don't like fingerprints. So you almost need to handle with care with the Harmonic Dyn Athena so you don't get those fingerprints on there. It's almost like holding a vinyl record or something, uh, you know, something like that. So that's con number one. Another con of the Harmonic Dyn Athena, I would say, is going to be in that mid-range, that it is a little bit recessed in the middle of the mid-range to the upper. So it's not going to be shouty or anything. You're just not going to quite get that. And then sometimes I did get some sibilance in the treble to where it almost reminded me of a bear like type headphone at times. So just note that as far as, uh, you know, the treble region goes for this. And then overall, just not quite as resolving as the other two headphones I'm talking about here. But, you know, that is uh, just kind of where this one lies with the cons. All right. And the final headphone to approach the stand will be the Drop PC38X which is the Sennheiser, of course, version of this drop. So come on down. First of all, this is not a reskinned 560S. There are some similarities, but there's definitely some differences. One of the similarities on this one is going to be the fact that throughout the frequency response, this one is represented pretty well as well. It does have a little bit more bass and rumble in the low end and in the lower part of the mid-range, I would say. So, and I mean actual rumble as far as I got out of that. So it gives it that engagement factor, which I think is a great thing to have with gaming. The other pro that you're gonna get out of this headphone is the fact that it does have the included microphone on here, which you simply flip it down to activate, flip it back up to mute it. So that's a nice included feature. By the way, the microphone quality is pretty damn good out of this headphone. The imaging on this is done very well. And then this is, Super easy to drive. I mean, being only 28 ohms, you can drive this off of anything, consoles, you know, any type of system. You can probably plug it into controllers just fine, and you're not going to need any kind of additional amp or power for this headphone. All right, so then as far as the cons of this one goes, I do have to say, for me, this one is not as comfortable as the 560S, and I think part of it for me is going to be the material of the pads. They're a little bit thinner around the ear, so I've got bigger ears, so they didn't fit quite as well there. And it just, I did feel the clampiness of this one a little bit more than I felt on the 560S. So for me, comfort goes on a cons, uh, for the, goes on a cons, comfort goes on the con list. And then also the bass, like I said, it's good, it's boomy and you know, it's engaging, but if you give it a little too much volume, it can actually get a little bit distorted and kind of get out of hand on you pretty quick. So if you throw some power at this thing, I think you'll see that as well and that you just got to be careful on your volume, but you shouldn't be really blasting this thing anyway, in my opinion. And then it doesn't have quite a big a stage as the 560S, not that the 560S was super big, but this one's definitely a little bit smaller on the stage. And that is kind of where I wrap this one up with the cons. All right, so hopefully that helps some of you guys there. The one final thing I would say on all three of these headphones is that Really, all three of them can be geared towards music or gaming. Now, obviously, if you were asking me which one I'd prefer just for gaming, I'm going to say the PC38X because that is what it's geared towards. It's got the mic already on there, so you are good to go with that headphone. Now, if you were telling yourself that you're more geared towards music and you want scalability and you want to throw more amps its way, then maybe you want the 560S or you like the aesthetics and you really want to go for something like the Athena because you like that engaging bass, you get where I'm going here. Just, you got to ask yourself what you were looking for. I'm going to tell you that I like all three of these for different reasons for each of them, which is the point of this video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If so, please smash that like button. And if you haven't done so already, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel because I've got more content that I will be working on as soon as I am done with this video. So I will let you guys get back to doing whatever it is that you do. In the meantime, guys, I will see you in the next one. I flipped the little pick here on the stand. This is a really nice stand, by the way. Want to find out who makes it? Ask in the comments down below. Cheers.